Hey guys, this is Skyler from The Mint Change You Can Wear. So today what we're going to be doing is making Morgan dollars into coin rings. Let's get started. So the first thing we need to talk about when we're talking about Morgan dollar coin rings is the hole size you punch in these coins to get the ring you want. I do these size 13 through size 18, and size 13 through size 16, 16 and a half is always going to be a 5 8 inch hole. After that it goes to a 3 quarter inch hole for 16 and a half through 18. And... Um, I used to use a half inch hole on some of the smaller ones, but the ring is just too fat and too bulky and it didn't look all that good. So I switched to only 5 eighths inch hole maybe a year or so ago. So for this first ring I'm going to make, I'm going to make a size 13. And the first step is to punch the hole. So now we can go over the hole punching, um, the different ways you can do hole punching, but I have a video I'm going to link below about punching your hole. I'm going to opt and use the quickest, easiest method, which is this. Uh, custom made punch and I'll have a video linked about the specifics on these also but for now I'm just going to go ahead and get started here just... all right now we're ready to punch what we're going to use for the pressure to punch this thing out is um, the six ton arbor press you could use a hammer if you wanted to this is really the easiest method though so you're going to be needing this for making the rest of the ring anyway i recommend and this is what we're going to go ahead and punch the coin out with. all right that is that so now we have it punched like that now the next step is to get that punch out of there Okay, so the punch is out, along with our scrap piece of silver, which we'll go ahead and save back. Okay, so now here we are back at the bench with this. So now, how do we get it out of there, right? Some of these, they'll get kind of stuck in there if it's a good snug fit like it's supposed to be. So all you do is just take your punch, stick it back in the other way, and push it through. This one came out real easy, but if it didn't, use a little persuasion on the back side of it, and it'll come right out. So now we're on to annealing. So what we're doing here is annealing the coin. We're just softening it up and getting it ready for the forging process. What we want to do is get it to a nice dull red, maybe not even quite that hot, and we'll be ready to go. And we'll quench it and move to the next step. All right, we're about there now. Quench it in some water. And now we are annealed and ready to go. So now that we have our coin all annealed, it's time to start talking about some tools we're going to need to finish the forging process. So what I have behind the coin here are two dies. Um, these dies, I have some a whole other video on specifics of these. It'll be the same video along with the hole punching specifics. So I won't go too far into that. But there's I have two here that I usually use when I'm making them. And um, I use two different sizes of ball bearings also. So the smaller one is a 24 millimeter ball bearing. And I'll use that for a majority of the ones I'm going to be making. And then on the bigger ones, like 16 and a half through 18, I use a larger ball bearing, which is a, um, it's a 26 millimeter. You can tell I don't use it that much because it's kind of rusty and it was sitting out in the garage for a while. So probably have to sand it up before I use it, but it'll be just fine. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the first process. So the first thing we're going to do is, you know, we need a die that's going to be actually be able to fit this thing. So that one's a little too small. So I had this one made. It fits it real perfectly. And we're going to go ahead and start pressing it with the 24 millimeter ball bearing. Okay, so now we have all ba our ball bearing all positioned and ready to go inside the press. And you remember if you watched that other video about the specifics on these tools, these uh, dies and everything, uh, I talked about how I played around with different angles and everything like that with these, and I found out 20 degrees was perfect. Well, here's one of the dies I was playing around with. Um, it's not at 20 degrees. And so what happens is it's a little steeper of an angle and it's a lot harder to keep the coin flush or flat, I guess square with the top of that die as we're going down. So I'm going to have to keep repositioning it until I get small enough to move to the smaller die that actually is 20 degrees and works a lot better. So that's what I'm going to start doing now. Get a 20 degree uh, die, it probably go a lot smoother. So word to the wise. This isn't too bad though. So you can see it's starting to get a little bit off kilter, so I'm going to go ahead and switch it right now and square it back up. Okay. 
And the reason you don't want it to go off kilter in there is because you don't want it to have a lopsided ring when you're finished. So if you just keep pressing away and it's going crooked, your ring will come out looking a little crooked when you're finished also. Right, that might be about enough. Let's take a look. So that would be just about enough. So now you can see that it will fit inside that die. And we're going to go ahead and kneel it before we start any further so it doesn't split and then we'll be right back pressing into this die. Okay, so we're all kneeled and ready to continue the pressing. Here we go. Same ball bearing, 24 millimeter ball bearing. about through here and that is it it's bottomed out inside the die now so we'll go ahead and pull it out and take a look at it so this is what we had when we pulled it out so the ball bearing has bottomed out and has actually wedged itself inside that coin so the thing we're gonna do to get it out we could put it in the die here, smack it with a hammer, or we could go ahead and press it out with the press. Since I have the press sitting right here, I'll just do that though. Okay, so now we are ready for the next step. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is gonna go ahead and anneal it again, and then we're gonna file the edges of this ring back here to round them out, and then we'll be ready for the next process after that. We're going to go ahead and file these edges with a half round file, the round side on the inside and the flat side on the outside. Okay, so you can see it's all been sanded and filed. So what we did is we sand, uh, filed it with that uh, half round file and then we went ahead and sanded it with some, you know, 120 to 340 sandpaper and we came up with something that looks like that. So now we know there's not going to be any splits going on because of a like a small crack that might have been in there and it's been annealed and ready to start stretching. So what we're going to do for stretching is put it on this ring sizer back here. And same process as the half dollars basically. The only difference is going to be this is a bigger ring so we're not going to have very far to get to the bottom. So we're going to stretch it as far as we can. About it right there. So the problem here, and I'll get a little closer so you can see it here. So unlike the half dollar video, we want to get this completely stretched out towards touching this stretching mandrel. We're not going to be able to get that to happen on a Morgan dollar because the stretching mandrel just isn't large enough. So there's two routes you can go to solve this problem. Okay, so the first route what we can do is this stretching mandrel that we made in another video. Remember it was connected to a block? Well, I ground that part off so that way we have a four-sided leaf system that we can just slip over the top of this. So we can So we can just go ahead and slip it over the top of this. Stick our Morgan and then continue stretching. So that is one option that we could do. The problem with this is sometimes it'll stretch a little too far and it will be harder to get back down to a size 13. This method works really great when you're trying to make a size 16 ring or something like that because you can stretch it out. Yeah, usually it's about three sizes larger than the size you want to get to. So say you want to do a 16, you have to stretch it up to a 17, 18, stretch it up to a 19 to get it back down to a 16 in the sizing. But what I like to do on the smaller sizes is go back to hammering the hammering method. Just finish closing that up on a mandrel, just hammering it. Doesn't take a lot of time, it's not a lot of effort. So that's what I'm going to choose to do. Okay, so when we decide you want to hammer it down a mandrel, we're going to encounter yet another problem with these Morgan dollars. We have our mandrel. Okay, so it doesn't fit on a regular size mandrel, right? 
So that's not a problem. They also make these larger mandrels too. So this one is what the one we're going to use and it barely fits on the top, which is perfect. And so we're going to go ahead and take this and hammer it down till those sides are flush against there. So it's already annealed, it's soft as it's going to get, so we just got to start hammering. That's the next step. Just keep turning as you hammer, hammer it evenly like you would um, a regular half dollar or a quarter during the hammering method. So that's what we're going to keep doing here until it's nice and snug up against there. Okay, so now you can see didn't take a whole lot of time, it was really, really quick, and it's hammered nice and snug up against there. So just like the half dollars, we don't want any bumps or protrusions sticking out of this thing or you have to continue hammering it, because it will mess you up in the sizing stage. So that is ready to be annealed again, and then we're going to move on to sizing. Okay, so now here it is off the mandrel, and we're ready to start sizing. So I measured this uh, size coming off the big mandrel, and it's about a size 18 now. So when it comes to sizing, we need about three sizes over the target size in order to shrink it back down to the size we want with nice and straight sides. You can tell this has really badly cone-shaped sides right now. We don't like that, so we want to get rid of it. So like I said, three sizes. So, so it's sitting at an 18 right now, so we can go down to a 17, 16, 15 in theory. Um, it might even have to go a little bit more depending. It might be three and a half sizes that you need to go down. So. Yeah, so you're going to have to play around with that and see how that works for you. I've found about three sizes works for me, though. Um, so we want to get this down to a 13. Say you want to make it a 16. What you're going to have to do, um, if you don't want to stretch it with the that copper pipe over the stretcher, you can do it another way. You can size it down till the sides are nice and straight. Say it gets down to a 14 and a half or a 15 and a half, something like that. You can start... See, this has a big old fat... Uh, coin edge on this thing and when it's curled in you can start sanding the inside right there without touching the detail at all and you can bring it up quite a bit actually if you depending on how much you sand off and that's usually how I deal with it because I do not like using that big stretcher on there because it tends to mush up the detail on the inside a little more than I like and you can tell right now the detail is really crisp still I like to keep it that way so I'll size it down and then I'll just use a a Dremel with a barrel sander on it and I'll sand my way back up or I could use a file to file back up and that's what I do to get up to sizes you know 16, 16 and a half. I'll use a 5 8 hole and then sand it up you know I'll make the sides straight once the sides are straight um, then I'll start to sand the inside to get to my target size so um, that's pretty much all I really want to say about that. I'm not going to actually do it. I think you guys can figure it out from my description. It's not that difficult. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is size this one down to a size 13. We're going to start putting it in our press with our die and we'll make it happen right now. Okay, so we're going to be moving away from this larger die now. That was only for the initial part. And we're going to stick with this medium sized die that, you, that I have here. And so this is going to go right in. We're going to put some sort of a pressing device that covers it completely and we're going to start pressing it down. I'm going to go ahead and do, um, as we were talking about earlier, about getting the sides nice and straight. If you're doing those larger sizes, I'm just going to go ahead and straighten the sides now so you can see what that looks like and see what size I make it to. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, we are about there now. Let's take a look at it real quick. Okay, so you can see now we're sitting at about a size 15, so that's exactly three sizes down. And you can tell the barrel of it's nice and straight. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So if you were wanting to make a size 15, you know, you would just size it up and hammer it down the mandrel like you normally would, come to about a size 18, and we reduce it down. So, but the problem here still is, if you were looking for a size 15, the inside of that band is still incredibly sharp. So what we need to do is file that with that half round file again just to get it comfortable to wear, smooth it out. That's probably going to raise it a quarter size to a half size right there. So if that happens, you go ahead and sand it, get it squared away the way you like it, and then you'll reduce it down to get to your target size still. If you were looking for a 15 and a half, that would be perfect for you then. You'd just sand it up to a 15 and a half, you'd remove the sharp edges, and be on your way. You could do that all the way up to a 16 or a 16 and a half and not have any bad effects on the inside of that coin. So that is how you would size that size range in there, like a 16 and a half down to a 15. 
But like I said, we still need to get this down to a size 13 for our customer that I'm making it for. So it's back to the press. So we're going to go ahead and put it coin ring side, coin edge side down again. And keep going down. Now with this particular die, I found it bottoms out and this ring will turn out to be about a 13 and a half. So we're going to get there first. Okay, so now we're there. Now this thing is bottomed out. I can't press anymore because that is touching the, the die. And now it is sitting right about, not quite 13 and a half, about 13 and three quarters almost. So what we need to do is find um, something that will get down into that die a little bit so we can continue pressing. So what I have done is I have a uh, socket that I ground off and this is what I use. It'll go down further into that die, far enough for me anyway to get down to a size 13. So what I do, set that in there. So I set my coin back in there and put this right over the top of it. And it's just enough to go over the, the ring so you're getting even pressure on the ring, but it's not enough to actually touch the sides of the die as I'm pressing down. That's important. You, don't want, you want the ring to be completely covered and you don't want anything touching the side of that die other than something soft like silver. You don't want steel touching steel. And then we're going to cover it with this one and begin to press. Okay, let's take a look at what size it is here. Okay, so now you can see we're at about a size 13. What we need to do is we need to keep going down a little bit farther so I can sand back that sharp edge. So I'm going to go down to about a 12 and 3 quarter, 12 and a half, something like that. And that's another thing, as I like to go, I like to, to compress evenly on both sides, so you can see I've already started to do the other side also. So that means that as I was pressing this down, I get to about size 13, and then I'll flip it around, and then do a little compression on this side, so that way I keep those sides more or less even. You don't want to get overly flared out, you don't want to get overly flared out on one side, and then turn it around and then have the whole thing kind of shift on you, and you'll have a cockeyed looking ring. So that's what I like to do is... Just do it evenly. Do it one, a little bit on this side, a little bit of that side until you get to your target size. So I'm going to go ahead and compress this a little bit farther to get down below a 13 just a tiny bit. Okay, so we're right where we want to be pretty much, just below a size 12 and a half. And I'm going to go ahead and now compress the other side to make the band look even, and then we'll start our sanding process. Okay, so instead of putting it in this coin edge side down, I'm going to flip it around. Start reducing on this side. Same exact procedure here. Go ahead and get that all lined up and ready to squish here. And be careful not to go too far, so check it pretty often. Okay, so now you can look at the band and see that it's looking about right now. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is start sanding the inside of that band with a file and some sandpaper just to get it smoothed out and get it back up to our target size of 13. Okay, so now it's been all sanded and sized and it's sitting exactly at a 13. The band looks real nice and it's ready for the finishing process. And you can see the inside of the band here real quick. Let me get a view on that. You can see Okay, so you can see it's been sanded back and smoothed out compared to what it was. And look at how much extra meat is left in there that you could take off before you ever got to the detail on the inside. And that's really a good way of sizing these too. You can sand it if you really want to. You can sand, keep sanding and get rid of more of that rim. And you can keep sizing it up larger if you wanted to. What if you over sand it, um, over file it? You're trying to get to a 13 and you you know you overshoot it by a quarter size after you realize, uh oh, I've overfiled this thing. Well then go right back to the dies and reduce it a little bit more. So you have that leeway. You can reduce, stretch, and you will get to where you want to get. So the next step now is to show how to do a larger one. 
So a size 16 and a half through a size 18 with a different size hole. So that'll be the next step. Okay, so now we've got the larger sized hole one. This is going to be a three quarter inch hole that I've punched in here. And with this one, we're going to go ahead and use the 26 millimeter ball bearing for the whole thing. And this one I decided I am going to do tail side out so we can see what that one looks like. So if we're going to do it tail side out, that means it's got to be head side up in the die. So we'll set it head side up in the die and start pressing. But before that, we're going to go ahead and anneal it. Okay, so now we're all annealed and ready to start pressing here. Just keep an eye that it's going down nicely in the center. If not, adjust it. Okay, so we're about halfway through the process here, and it's about that far tapered now. And we're going to go ahead and switch dies. Before we do, I'm going to go ahead and anneal it again. So now it's all annealed. We've switched to the smaller die, and we're going to do the last bit of pressing now. And that is it right there. Okay, so now you can see it's been bottomed out in the press, and again, the ball bearing stuck in it, so we're going to go ahead and get that out the same way. But that is the taper we're looking at now. So the next step here is to see if we either want to do it on the ring stretcher with that sleeve over it, or we can go ahead and just hammer it out on the large mandrel. I'm going to choose to go ahead and hammer this one out on the large mandrel. But before I do, we're going to go ahead and anneal it and then take care of these edges. We're going to file them and then sand them like we did the first one. Okay, so now it's been annealed and we have these edges all filed and ready to go. So now the next step would be to start hammering it down that large ring mandrel. All right, so it's all been hammered down now, and it's all nice and tight up against the ring mandrel. It's sitting right about, uh, a, let's see here, 19 and a half. So that would make a 16 and a half ring if we were to size it down three sizes. So we're going to go ahead and size it down, and then once we have it sized down, we'll go ahead and start, um, as soon as we have the sides flattened out, so you have to have nice straight sides because now we have a taper. Once their sides are straightened out, we're going to go ahead and start finish sizing. So I do it from size 16 and a half to a size 18. And basically the way that's done is, um, the way I do it anyway, is I just take the, the extra meat out of the inside of here. Um, and that's how I size the larger ones. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. But first, what we really need to do is anneal it one more time before we go sizing. So now it's been annealed and we're ready to start sizing. So what we're doing is putting the coin edge side down because that's the side with the taper in it. We're going to start pressing it until we get rid of all that taper. Now you can see it's actually starting to taper the other way. So we have it as small as we need to go for right now. Let's check it on the ring sizer, see what it is. So now you can see we are at 16 and a quarter. And so that would be about perfect. If we were to make a 16 and a half, you just, you know, take care of those sharp edges inside of there. And then you're going to have to, well, it's about straight. So you just take care of the, um, the sharp edges on the inside of this here, and you'd be right at a 16 and a half. Or you can just take care of a little bit more, and you'll be to a 17, 17 and a half, 18. So that's how I would do it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this one up, and see if I can't make it into a size 17 ring real quick. So the first step is take our half round file again, and start 
sanding this inside out. So now it's sized up to a size 17 ring and you can see the sides are nice and straight and looks pretty good. So we could continue to file it down if you wanted to get to a size 18, but I'm going to stop at 17, it's fine. Um, you can see there's quite a bit more room left to go in there too, so we could take it quite a bit more. The reason I'm doing the filing is it's just a lot easier for me to do that than try figuring out a way to make my ring stretcher larger. And um, so filing is what I've always done. The um, That sleeve that I, that I showed earlier is very, very new to me, so I haven't really had a chance to use it a whole lot. So I just stick with the old method for now. I'm sure that that sleeve will work just fine, though. But that is pretty much the size 17. Now the next thing would be would be to clean it up and do the antiquing process. And that's going to be shown. We have another video that shows how to antique silver coin rings. But I will show you the finished product when we're done. Okay, so here's the finished product all polished up and ready to go. I'm going to link a video below of finished polishing silver so you can take a look at exactly how to do that. I didn't want to cover the same ground again for people, so you can go ahead and take a look at that video to see how I did that. But this is it. And I made this shot for some of those coin collectors out there who thought, you know, this is a rarer date in 1894. So you can see it's an 1894O now, not a P or anything. So still a little bit more expensive than normal, but this was actually for a customer who had a um, specific date for, for sentimental reasons. They actually ordered a uh, barber, a barber half dollar in size 13 also. So, but um, yeah, it's a really cool. It's actually a really cool set. So, that's an O also. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys, and um, if it was, please like it and subscribe. All right, thank you.